Hello guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to the Free Amers. It's Luke here. Um, this is just a bit of a random video, really. I read an article by the you know renowned West Ham journalist from the Guardian, Jacob Steinberg, um, and the title of it read um, "Tin Pot Trophy?" Question mark. This is what it means to West Ham. Um, and I see a couple of videos, uh, you know, from you know just other fans around Twitter and stuff, and. It's just, it really inspired me, you know, Jacob's article goes into, you know, how, you know, the top six clubs will just push this trophy away and some other clubs would just push this trophy away and, you know, what it means to, means to him and what he thinks it means to West Ham fans, um, you know, winning and you know this feeling, this feeling that we're all experiencing now, this euphoric, this euphoricness is just um, indescribable. Um, so I wanted to take you know a few minutes to just see, say what it means to me as a West Ham fan of 38 years. You know, I'm a, I'm a 38 year old man. You know, a season ticket holder a few times. You know, I've, I've, you know probably. About ten years out of the thirty-eight, I was a season ticket holder. I had to, you know, give it up a little while ago because of my daughter being born. But you know, I, all from you know my first ever game, West Ham versus Norwich. Um, you know, you're hooked straight away. But you know, from a young age, you're not told, um, or, or you don't fully understand what it's about to be a West Ham fan. You know, you, you, you through years of, you know, you hear the stories from your granddad about Bobby Moore and then from your dad, you hear about Devonshire, Brookie and Bonds. Um, and, you know, you're never told that it, it's going to be such a long slog for you to ever win anything. Um, you know, and that that changed on Wednesday night. Look, before that, if you, if you want to compare, um, you know, what my West Ham top five memories or experiences were before that none of them involve a trophy barring the playoff final which you know that's not a trophy that's just the prestige of going to Wembley and getting back up which was an amazing experience one of the best days out of my life but you know before that and this is where you know that that banter from the fans you know when, when you're talking to Arsenal fans and Chelsea fans and you know the Chelsea fans saying oh, you know win the Champions League winning this winning that and you've got Man United fans that are my age you know seeing one of the treble when they're like 15 and that um, you know Arsenal fans seeing the Invisibles and you know when you talk to other top six fans you know they, they don't get it that they're so spoiled with their trophies because they're and and it is a it's it's a good thing from their club, you know. Their their thing is very much a you know you win a trophy, we move on, next one, next one, next one, next one. But for a club like West Ham and clubs around there, like I always have my pal Sam, a Newcastle fan, that they are gonna see the fruit of their loins soon. You know they are gonna get there. And he said if they would have won that Carabao Cup, it would have meant so much to him. But yeah, back to what I'm saying. My memories, my positive memories are. Like I'd say, oh, I was there for Paolo Di Canio's goal against Wembley. Amazing. I was there when West Ham beat Tottenham 3-0. And, and, you know, you can see where the banter comes from, from the Tottenham fans that, you know, your biggest memory in football is seeing West Ham win 3-0 at Tottenham. Or, or being there, oh, I was there at Old Trafford when Di Canio scored against Bartes when he did this. Um, being there for the last ever game at Upton Park. You know, some beautiful memories I've got. I, I was there when Trevor Sinclair scored that wonderful goal against um, Derby. You know, away games that I've been to and seen some fantastic... Like, I've got some incredible memories and some incredible goals and some incredible moments I've seen. And there's memories like, um, you know, the, the playoff final way back when we, when we got promoted under Pardew. I was living in Mallorca at the time, and that, you know, just that was one of my best memories. Going around Mallorca, there's a guy in a, a little mini playing bubbles, going all the way around Mallorca High Street, and, and just that that's my greatest memories. In terms of winning, you know, as a West Ham fan, we're sort of bred to believe it doesn't happen. And as they say about our song, our song is dreams they fade and die they're always hiding um you know we've in my lifetime I, i've seen west ham 
you know, just be so close. Um, the many or my women one, I was there. That was uh, the year of my first season ticket that year. So I was a bit spoiled that year because Palo de Canio, obviously, all my memories that year. But that year, like, of typical of West Ham to have that moment of Manny Umawimi brought on um, and then it was taken away. Because I do believe we would have won that League Cup that year. I do. I, I think we would have won it that year if um, that match wouldn't have happened. So that was my first sort of real experience of pain for West Ham. Um, then you've got the, um, obviously, the year we beat Manchester United 1-0 at um, Old Trafford. The next game... Um, I think it was Sunderland, and then the one after that was the Tottenham game, um, which we lost. Stuart Pearce scored a free kick in that game, and again, just so nearly there. You know, it's so, so nearly there. Um, the Payet one, you know, when Payet scored the wonderful free kick at Old Trafford, and then a the controversial goal, and then the replay. Um, that was tough. And then, obviously, in between that, you've got the FA Cup final of 2006, which, you know, still hurts to this day to watch those videos you know you are still screaming to Lionel Scaloni kick it out for a throw kick it out for a throw um yeah we're, we're not used to it and when um when we stayed up that year with Tevez and we obviously left straight after I remember just in my head thinking we're never going to be a big club we're, we're just everything that goes wrong for us you know the we have a billionaire take over and they go bankrupt. We have one of the top five players in the world in Dimitri Payet, and then we it, we lose him because of what happened. Um, we get Arnie, and we, we have all these heroes we fall in love with, and then they're, they're taken away when we got relegated when Joe Cole left, and you know seeing players like Lampard and Rio and Joe and Defoe. All those players that, you know, that maybe would have gone on and been heroes at West Ham in different circumstances. Um, and the fact that now this hero, and listen, he probably is going to go back and West, but now this hero that has come through the academy and bought into the club, you know, early days of him at West Ham when he was in the carpet as pub and he just popped in there and he's, you know, the fact that he appeared on like Hammer's Chat show and you know, does so much for the kids and stuff like that and just seems like such a brilliant, brilliant guy. Has won this trophy. It, it is what, it, it is, it was one of the best days of my life. The emotion, I can't describe it. It, it, it Boeing scored and then obviously there was all that nervous energy and stuff like that. But when that final whistle went, this whole aura of relief and happiness and joy. Um, I see someone describe it as probably the most addictive drug you could probably ever take. If uh, if someone could bottle it and put it in a bottle and you could drink it, it would be the biggest selling drink ever. That feeling of, I've seen my team do it. I genuinely believed I would never see West Ham win a trophy in my life at one point. I got to a point where it was like, we're just always going to be nearly. Or the fact that the league has transformed so much that, you know, these big clubs are, they take the FA Cup quite seriously. And even the League Cup has more or less become the Man City Cup now. You know, it gets to a point where it's like, you really do have to have had like one of those all the stars align thing, um, you know, you, you envy a team like Leicester, you know, who had that moment, you know, and we've got, we've got it now. Those, those scenes in Prague of the players and, you know, you know, I know Paul was there, like my picture that I've put as the thumbnail is, you know, me, my dad, my brother-in-law, my two nephews, to have shared that with them. That's a memory that lives with me for the rest of my life and, and, and my dad's life and, you know, my brother-in-law, my nephews. You know, it's, you can't buy those moments. That That is, that's, that is what football is about. That is what West Ham is about. That is the religion that is football. How, you know, in all logical thinking, how can 11 men make me so happy that are playing a game of, a game? It's, it is... Yeah, I am so happy. The bus tour just summed up what 
our community is all about. That felt like old West Ham. Um, you know, I, I was only watching it on telly, but anyone who's attended that I've spoken to said it felt like old West Ham again. You know, that we've that West Ham we've got back again. And you know, and, and it, all these other fans, and it's ma mainly like some rivals, um, you know, calling it a tin pot trophy. You can call it a tin pot trophy, mate. That tin pot trophy meant more to me than anything I've ever, ever experienced as a football fan and a West Ham fan. Um, you know, and I, and I hope, as Jacob says in his interview, it inspires teams like Villa, like Brighton, and like us again, use these nights go this is their moment you know it's, we're never going to win a Premier League we're never going to win a Champions League but a Europa Conference League a Europa League it is is there that that is your chance to to have that moment and give your fans a joy it, it, it angers me that some players are so and it, like I know the Tottenham fans are quite snobby about it that it's like mm, they don't want to win that trophy do you know what a trophy means to the fans? Do you know what it's done to this whole East London, Essex community? There's people walking around proud as chest out with that West Ham shirt on now, knowing that they can say that they've won. They've seen their team won something. It might not ever happen again. It may not ever happen again. Or if it's another 40 years, I'll be bloody 70 odd years old. You know, drink it in. Enjoy this moment. It's beautiful. I want more. Of course I want more. I would love West Ham to win an FA Cup. That's probably one of my biggest things I would love to see West Ham win. And I'd love to see us play in the Champions League. Not win it, but play in it. But to see those scenes, to see and share it with my family and share it with my friends. You know, I have my friends sending me videos of them reacting and Paul sending me videos of Prague Square. Um, and watching all the YouTube channels that I watch, I watch every single one of them and reading articles from um, Jacob. This is what football is about, and this is this is West Ham's level. I'm not sitting here and kidding anyone and saying West Ham are a big club now. We're not a big club. We're a good club and we're a very decent level club. You know, sixty thousand, hundred thousand over the uh, Prague and um, bus tour. You know, joined together. We are a good club. And we're in a good place again now. It's all about now enjoying it now. Enjoying it. Um, yeah. That's what it means to me, guys. That is what West Ham and winning something and seeing my team means to me. Um, thank you, Jacob, for that wonderful article. Um, and yeah, guys, let in the comments if you did make it all the way to the end. It's like I say, it's a bit more of a personal video for myself to look back on when I'm an old man and see how happy I was. And to show my grandchildren one day what this means and what it means to be a West Ham fan and what this trophy means to me. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. We're very, very close to 4,100 now, so free away. So if you want to hit that subscribe button, that would really help. Loads of news coming thick and fast, guys. Season fixtures come out next week. Uh, loads of stuff about David Moyes and Declan Rice will all be going on. But yeah, guys, let me know what you think. Come on, you irons!